it has been a fascinating last 24 hours as there have been shocks which have diverted our attention momentarily from the political area um, and other social, cultural, economic areas around New Zealand. But one of those issues that we continually have diverted from our attention is the missing family. I've talked about it before and I've been quite critical of the police. Do you remember... Oh, gosh. It was September 2021. So what's that? Almost 18 months ago? Well, 15 months ago. A very odd man by the name of Tom Phillips. Now, I don't know him, but my assessment from a distance is that he appears to be very odd. Uh, his four-wheel drive was discovered on a beach in, Nor uh, sorry, in sort of, sort of Raglan-type area. And there were great concerns for him and the safety of his three children. His three children called Jadar, Maverick, and Ember. Um, and in actual fact, he'd gone bush. And he was eventually discovered, and the police charged him with various offences. I don't know, I'm sorry, what they were. Uh, and the kids were returned into the bosom of their family. But in December of the same year, he didn't turn up to court, took off, and took off again with the kids, Jada and Maverick and Ember, and hasn't been seen since. Now, just quietly, if I was a responsible Oranga Te Oranga Tamariki or a responsible police force and a father had seemingly kidnapped his kids, I'd be just think it was my responsibility to go and track them down and find them. For the very least just to ensure that they have a decent education, but also just to ensure that they're safe and they're well. But no, the police say that they don't have anything to go on and would have seemed to have abandoned um, an attempt to find them. And so a former military and police officer, Chris Budge, who is a private investigator, has been taking the lead on that, on seeking to find them. He joins us now. Chris, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Michael. Chris, have I summed that up right? Yeah, I, you, you're known to be fair, a little bit critical on the police, and, and I get that. And I guess on one hand, I would I would agree that things have, have come to a bit of a halt. And it's quite scary that there hasn't been a rallying of government departments or, shall I say, those do-gooders who would like to come in and see um, the family and the children out. And it was quite scary last year. Uh, another media outlet um, asked a question of the Children's Commissioner and the response was, why on earth are you contacting me? What's it got to do with me? Contact the Ministry of Education. And that, that seems quite a disappointing response to someone in our country that's been appointed to look after uh, our children um, in circumstances when it's not the norm that we would like. But also... Yeah, I'm sorry, I'll, it's I'll, just, it just bemuses me that you can take off with three kids that are under the age of 10, not hear yep. from them for, God, what, 15 months? No, 13 months now. Uh, yes, 13 months, yep. And not think that's a problem? Yeah, and... and to be fair, it's actually reasonably easy to, to drop off, off, off the radar um, from viewing. And I, I, I firmly believe that they're not in the bush. Um, they may have been initially. Um, I think it was a bit remiss of the police at the time, thinking that here we've had a father who has deliberately gone out and misled the police and, and, and iwi, et cetera, by leaving their vehicle out on the, on the, 
on the uh, the mud flats, thinking that um, they had done self harm, whereas in fact they'd gone off and hid somewhere. Now, the police didn't even consider that he could potentially do that again when they charged him with offence. So when that offence came round to January, which was actually last week um, in 2022, um, of course, he didn't turn up. And they never even thought that he might do a runner. And in fact, even when they were doing the search and rescue um, with documents that have been obtained by the OIA, is that they hadn't even considered that he had run away with the kids. It was all about... Um, potential death and then looking for bodies when they walk out of the bush. Now, for him yes. to hide for that 12, 13 month period, I don't believe he's in the bush. I believe that he has either been um, looked after uh, by friends on a farm. Um, I'm pretty sure that the his parents, the grandparents, um, uh, know where they are. Um, or alternatively, the kids have been dropped at another location and Tom is working on a farm somewhere to make some money. Now, the reason I think this is that over the, over the last 12 months, to be fair, there's been a reasonable amount, probably at least once a month, of someone making contact with me saying that here's a sighting. Now, those sightings have been put into 105, the police reporting line, either verbally or in writing, and it's presumed that those sightings have then gone to the police. And when the superintendent, um, the district commander and the area commander, the inspector, were asked, what have you done? They have responded that we have, we have followed up all inquiries. Well, we've had two in the last two weeks. And one was a Central Island service station with CCTV, CCTV footage of the kids and a number plate. I made contact with that particular service station um, brand and spoke to the person who actually does the securing and under the Privacy Act, I can't see it, I can't know anything about it, I absolutely get that. But as of the end of last week, which was 10 days after being reported to the police, nobody had requested those footage. Now, that footage disappears at 30 days, so that's next week, that footage will disappear. I really hope the police have jumped in and gone and had a look at it and discounted it. I don't know what um, they're doing because it's been, yeah. What's your relationship with the police? You have a former policeman. Oh, I, I, have, I, have, I have no relationship in any way, shape or form. Um, uh, way back mid last year, um, I was uh, up in Hamilton doing something else and there was a bit of media around the time. Um, I reached out to the mother and I had a, I had a, a dinner with the mother and, and uh, Jubilee and um, just sort of said, hey, I have time on my hands at the moment. Would you like a hand to do something? Would you like a second pair of eyes across that? And at that time, uh, they were agreeable. And it's without pay, without recognition, without anything. It was just standing up and in my mind doing the right thing. Um, so I've had no direct contact with anybody in Hamilton, but I have spoken with and emailed with the local sergeant, um, uh, James Walker, who has responded to when I've made contact with him and said thank you. And that's kind of all my expectations what would be. Um, I know the police have spoken directly with the family and they've had meetings about what they were doing, including um, in the third quarter of last year, they put helicopters across the ground. Um, but also they haven't really passed on the sighting. So we know absolutely mid last year, someone who knows both the kids and the family, uh, the Tom saw Tom at a local Otrahonga farm and the three kids were seen in Otrahonga in a car and that person works at a business in Otrahonga. One would think that they would have been spoken to and that's a hell of a strong lead because they were known people who had seen these people and knew them. But nothing's come from it. The children's family have offered $10,000 for information leading to their safe return. Is that correct? Yes, they have. Yes, they have. They have self-funded and also uh, got some on Give a Little. Um, it's uh, the family's put forward the ten thousand dollars, as reported by Jubilee, who is one of the siblings, uh, that uh, which may lead, which would lead to um, the discovery or proof of location of um, of the three children and Tom. Um, that's in response to the police saying that they would not offer an award, a reward in any way, shape or form uh, for information leading to um, informa uh, the recovery. And um, so the family jumped in and tried to do something themselves. 
The problem I've got, and I would think most people listening to this and who have read about this case, is that we haven't seen the mother who we would have expected to have gone public in an appeal. We've only seen the half-sister, so presumably that's the mother's daughter. That's correct. Seeking publicly um, the whereabouts of these kids. Have you been in contact? You've been in contact with the mother, you say. Is there yes, a reason was, why she year. hasn't gone public? Um, I guess I can say that, that she's a very private person um, and she, I think, believes in what the police are doing and the police have requested that they don't do their own searches because we were going to do a search last year and the police asked them to call that off, so we call, it, they called Why? that off. Um, well, the police believe that Tom may be a risk to the children, so if cornered, um, oh. he could do something on the other side. And, and listen, to be fair, that is absolutely a hypothesis and absolutely could be right. I don't believe that's correct. The whole reason why this thing came about with Tom, that I've been told, and the, his father hinted at this, was over the um, family court hearing and the, the comments that were made and the judgment that was made at the time. And his only way to have access to the children was to take them away. So the only so way get this to right, resolve this... Because this is, this, is, yep. this is obviously a broken relationship. Being there myself... Yes. Lots of people are listening to this have. You end up in... With, and who's going to get custody of the kids, A, and then B, what are the access rights? Yep. Um, if it gets really bad, you end up in the family court. And, yep. and this went to the family court and a judgment was made in favour of the mother. Is that right? No, in favour of the father. And the children would be located at the father's father, the grandparents' house. Oh, um, so it out, was out not made coast. to the mother or the father, but to the grandfather. Correct. Oh, see that. And then when he went, and, alarm bells. And, and then went, yeah. <laughs> and then when he went missing, so when he came back from being missing the first time, there was another family hearing, and it wasn't going his way. Now, listen, I've been in a couple of matrimonials myself, and um, et cetera, so I know how sometimes the truth gets a little bit stretched. And from what I've heard, it sounds like both sides are telling a wee bit of porkies. In the case of what Tom has said, is that he was more, maybe I'll use the word substantive in his arguments, therefore um, the mother was painted in quite a bad picture. And it's that bad picture that mum would be a little bit worried about coming out because we're quite a judgmental country at times. And if they hear her history, um, they might not be quite so sympathetic. So that's another reason why I don't think she's coming forward. The judgment that was made yeah, in December 2021. Yep. And she uh, hasn't seen it. those children now for a long, long time. Yeah, she only saw them for about an hour and a half um, when they came out of the bush the first time, so she didn't get to see them an awful lot. Um, and then, of course, Tom then disappeared again. So, Sorry, so let me get this right. Yep, I get that. Cust custody has been awarded to Tom's father. And Correct, his... that's in December 21. So what's... So Tom is estranged from his parents as well? Because I would have thought... Oh, no, that I, that... Think, I think Tom is pretty... I think Tom is pretty close to his parents. And in fact, I think they're the ones that were initially helping him um, in December and January um, 22 and that Tom was uh, reported seeing, uh, taking um, food um, from other family in the location because he does have a family group there. Uh, the rest of his siblings are over on the, on the East Coast. Um, and um, when, I, when I met the father, I, I, wrote a, I wrote a letter to Tom, which uh, I gave to the father by hand, and to a couple of his friends, particularly the farm where he had been sighted mid-year last year. And I put in that letter saying, hey, Tom, all we're looking for is all we care about is the kids. Everybody I've spoken to and everybody who's spoken to me is interested in the welfare of the children, not about his family or his criminal 
activities. And wasting police time is such a naff bloody charge anyway um, that he'd probably get off that for psychological or family court reasons. Mm. So mm. I sent that and I said, hey, if you want to find a way, flick me a letter. Give me a call. Send me a message. I'll, I'll help as a mediator um, putting my integrity on the line. When I spoke to the father and looked him directly in the eye and he turned around and said, I don't know where they are, I've interviewed hundreds of people over my, my service and in, in career, and I don't think he was telling the truth. I believe that he knew how to contact them, but he was protecting his son because of the family court. And that's what he said to me. He said, Tom will not come out, or he will come out when he's ready, and it's all to do with the court. Right. The thing that concerns me most, though, is, um, all right, we're two, dealing with two dysfunctional adults, that's fine. And obviously when the family court doesn't award custody to either mum or dad, then you can draw your own conclusions. But from a public policy point of view, when three children of vulnerable age go missing, actually the circumstances are worse for neither parent being in a particular position to be their full-time guardian or court-appointed guardian. Then again, I go back to why wouldn't government agencies be seeking to find these children to assure us, A, of their safety, and B, that they're getting education, psychological help, all those sorts of things that they surely must need? So what I've been told third party, and um, so the Child Commission is not interested, um, Orangutan Mariki is not interested because the wow. police is the lead agency. Yeah. Ministry of Education is not interested because all they do is truancy, so it's a police lead agency issue. I don't think ACC has even thought about what their liability is going to be in due course because, uh, you know, if we talk about Stockholm Syndrome with Dad, it was a bit of a game at the start, but now they're hiding out, coming into puberty age, they need assistance from another woman, etc. That's why I think they're with some other family. Um, How but they're not they interested now? because they're all sitting... Oh, um, I knew, thought you might ask me that. Um, well, I think were, the youngest is were they, seven. Were they, were the they nine, eight, eight, and six back in 2021? Yes, that's correct. So they would, have, they would be heading into their second year. Yeah, so, so 11, 10, and 8. 11, yeah. Mm. And the other thing is no friends. The whole socialisation no, issue. Unless they're with a family that has kids. But you're absolutely, so when I turn around and think about this and you sit back and you do the old whiteboard session and say, what are the options? I think I come up with four options. Option one, they're in the bush, <clears throat> unlikely, because they need support. Option two, they are all living on a farm in a shepherd's hut or something and getting fed and looked after by somebody else. And Tom is providing his farm duties to do that. Option three. The kids have been separated. And the reason I say this is because um, last week I received a sighting of three kids and an adult on the train um, from Hamilton to um, uh, Auckland. And they, the four of them got off from the 10 o'clock train and the father, uh, the male, got back on at the fiber train heading back down. And the last option, I think, which always needs to be on the table, but we really hope it didn't happen, is they're not currently alive. Mm. Something's happened. Mm. And I would think by accident. So you got those four there. And what we can only hope, and it's been really good that the media has stepped up because that's the only way the message is getting out. There's been one ten seven, but it was a bit of a short one and wasn't terribly helpful, is that for people to keep their eye open for a male and three kids, particularly two girls and one boy, and get on the phone straight away. And let one I find physical description of the, the kids... I'm looking at pictures of three of them now. Yep. Um, the standard media shots. Now, yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm looking at that and thinking one of them seems to be part Maori, but is that is that just a bad photo? Yes. No, 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 no. No, that follows on from mum's history. Right. Mum's um, So then of so those yes, three children, correct. two will be Pākehā and the older yep. girl will be part Maori. Correct. See... I, you and I having this conversation now, none of that information's out there in the public arena. I, I think the media campaign by the responsible agency is immature. Um, I think part of that is um, 
Firstly, the, the lead detective, I understand, has changed. I got told that last week. So the guy who was in charge is now gone, so there's a new person there. But in my mind, that's a perfect opportunity to pull out a cold case and go, right, let's be really self-critical of ourselves. Have we followed up every single inquiry? And how can, here's an opportunity based on, shall we say, the anniversary of stuff to get out there and really push it because there are recent sightings. Um, the catch with some of these sightings, though, is that when the 105 operator has said, we will contact you or that somebody will contact you, I've had reports of four people who have never been contacted, which includes myself, in regards to sightings and information. But you're no, absolutely appears, correct. It appears an appalling dereliction of duties, but also there's a bit of wokeness going on here too, which is not aiding and assisting the inquiry. No, and, you know, wouldn't it be really great, um, wouldn't it be really great if somebody sat down and maybe if the lawyer was appointed for the children because their argument's not in this at the moment, and I would argue that, that somebody who's acting on behalf of the children could put a petition into the court to say, can that arrest warrant be rescinded? So he's not facing any charges anymore. It's all about the kids. And then the family court turns around and says, within 14 days of the kids coming out, we will have an open hearing to reco re reconsider all facts. It's all about the kids. We mm. start thinking about kids and not concentrating on Tom. But we don't do that in our bureaucracy. We don't think that sort of way, which is really unfortunate. All right. Thank you very much for joining us, Chris. Um, the best of luck in Go your away. continual quest. And I hope in some small way we might have assisted you. Thank you very much. Um, that's Chris Budge, private investigator, former policeman. And the very curious case, which has intrigued me for a long time, because the thing that's most intrigued me is why a whole series of bureaucratic public sector organisations with direct responsibility for the care of children and the vulnerable don't care about these kids. Um, and also, that's the first time you would have seen in the media that the young girl, um, that's Jada, who would now be probably 11, is part Maori, and the two other kids, age Maverick, who would call their child Maverick, um, be 10 and Ember, who's six, or no, is eight now, uh, Pakiha. And so they obviously belong to him, but the, the older child, Jada, is obviously not a blood relative. But there you go.